Another round of applause for Ben Miller, by the way. Hell yeah. Well, guys, welcome. The name of the show is American History Sex because I'm an American, I love history, and I love sex. <laughs> Just making eye contact with my dad as I'm saying it. <laughs> and uh, so basically the show came about to answer one question, and I'm going to ask the question now, and I want your honest opinion. Folks, how soon into a first date do I tell a woman how much I know about the American Civil War? Let's, uh, let's clap if I should wait 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, one man. Clap if I should wait 20 minutes. Clap if under no circumstances should I bring up the American Civil War on a first date. Ah, yes. Yes, yeah, she felt the same way. <laughs> you're supposed to talk about what you're, what you're interested in, right? What you're passionate about on a first date. Unless what you're passionate about is not fuckable. Then you should keep it to yourself. And here's what I learned. Knowledge of the American Civil War is right between knowledge of uh, anime and taxidermy in terms of fuckability. <laughs> it's not interesting. You should keep it to yourself. I do love the American Civil War. Uh, before we go any further, I'm a big fan of the North. <laughs> the Union. The abolition of slavery. Dude, it's the only hobby where you gotta explain you're on the right side. <laughs> You know, if I'm like, hey, I like baseball, I don't immediately have to go, and I like the Yankees. But if I say I like the Civil War, I really do have to go, and I like the Yankees. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what it is, man. I, uh... So, hey, let's move on to the first part of our presentation. It's called... Here's where I don't know how to use the technology. Guys, we're gonna get through this together. This is such the opposite of big load energy. <laughs> All right, I went back. Hey, you always remember your first. Okay, so you'll have to split your time between my face and the television. So it's American history sex. You always remember your first. Of course, I'm gonna talk about presidential firsts. Hell yeah. I'm learning, guys. I'm 33 years old and I've never used an iPad before. It's my first time. Uh, so we've had a lot of presidential firsts. We've had our first Catholic president. We've had our first black president. <laughs> we've even had our first dead president. <laughs> and uh, our first president with a mugshot. That's gonna go down in history. But Trump is actually not the first president to be arrested. The first president to be arrested was Ulysses S. Grant. Now, Grant was the, uh, uh, the general of the Union Army, and as president, he destroyed the Ku Klux Klan, but he had a dark side. He used to ride his carriage a little too fast. <laughs> this is true, as president, uh, Grant was pulled over by a Washington, D.C. police officer, and the police officer said, did you know how fast you were going? And then he quickly added, are you the president? <laughs> and the cop said, forgive me, sir, if I knew you were the president, I wouldn't have pulled you over. And Grant replied, what would you have done if I'm not the president? And he said, well, I would have arrested you. And Grant said, son, you better arrest me then. And I just love that juxtaposition between him and Trump. It's such the opposite of Trump energy. Trump is like, why can't I pay off porn stars and my political enemies? <laughs> Meanwhile, Grant is like, I do sometimes drive a little too fast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's talk about Lincoln, dude. I love Lincoln. Lincoln was a lot of first. First president to be on the penny, of course. First president to be a Republican. Party's a little different now. First president to be assassinated. And he's the first president to have a beard. Her name is Mary Todd. <laughs> 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 
lot of speculation about Lincoln's sexuality. Some people think that he may have been gay, and this is mostly because in his 20s and his, and his 30s, he did what was called the lawyer circuit. So him and his partner, who was also a man, would sometimes share a room, and sometimes they would share a bed. But as someone that's young and chasing their dream as well, I can confirm that that doesn't necessarily, that's the bed, that doesn't necessarily make you gay. <laughs> It was my job to book the hotel room. I thought there were two full-size beds. Turns out there was one queen, but we're secure in our masculinity. And we cuddled up together, mostly because the heat was broken. Don't say it to Super 8 in Lexington, Kentucky. You're not gonna have a nice time. Oh wait, that's in Pennsylvania. You guys get it though. So, I've been all over. I've been to Pennsylvania. I've even been to Kentucky, so. So Lincoln was probably straight, but we do know this. So according to that law partner, a friend and biographer, uh, Lincoln told him that he had been infected with syphilis in Beardstown. We all know what happens in Beardstown. <laughs> in either 35 or 36 by a prostitute. Now, Lincoln is probably not the first president to have an STD, but he is uh, the president with the world's worst friend. <laughs> By the way, if anyone here has an STD, I'm not judging you, okay? This is a judgment-free zone. Many great Americans have had STDs. It's no big deal, totally natural. Nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs>